welcome back and we are ready now to start the first round of unconditional surrender case blue uh, we will start up here with the weather phase we are starting in July so if you look at July regardless of what we roll it will be fair weather so we don't have to roll we don't have to roll until September actually or until October and uh, when you're attacking and also to some extent defending the weather has a quite uh, important effect. The worse the weather, the worse it is to attack and defend. We will just put the weather marker on the fair spot, like this, to remind us that in round one there is fair weather. And that was the weather phase. We will go through all the phases, and in each phase the Axis will go first and then the Allies, or no, in this case it's the Soviets. So first the axis, then the Soviet, and we will do that for every phase. So weather phase is the only phase where the axis is the sole player that acts. He is the one that is rolling the dice for the weather. Now we are going into the um, the economy phase, where we will determine how many production production points each faction is going to get. Here is the monthly production. Um, Germany has eight. Romania has two, Italy and Hungary has one each production. The USSR have six productions from July to November 1942. Then they will have plus two per factory under Soviet control. Germany, eight. Romania, two. Italy, and then the Soviets, well they have Eight, no, sorry, they have six plus two per factory under their control. We can start counting factories. Rostov, that's one. Stalingrad, that's two. Groshny, that's three. Six plus six, that's twelve. Oh my. They do have a lot of factories. That's the economy phase done for both the uh, both the um, Axis and the Allies. Uh, we probably should have moved this turn track counter into the first spot as well and when we did that this air force will go into the mobilization box yep yeah, into the mobilization box and the first guards in the upgrade box we are now in the operations phase and now I can activate the unit to perform an action okay so what kind of actions can I do and that depends on the unit I have. In this game there are only two types of units. It's ground units and air units. In the full game there is also naval units, but it's not here. So the basically the ground units, they can move and fight. The air units can add support to the ground fighting or they can rebase, moving closer or further away from the front line or they can strike out and try to take out an uh, enemy air unit uh, in the full game they can also attack naval units but let's forget about the full game so now it's the Germans turn and they can activate units and they can attack did I say Germans? well if I say Germans I mean Germans, Hungary, Italy and Romania now the interesting part with this game is that although they are part of the same faction they count production independently. So Yeah, so okay, so what do I want to do? Well to win the game I need to take Rostov, Groshny and Stalingrad. Yeah, I'm going to activate the Romanians and attack across the strait to try to push back these units. Okay, so why do I want to do that? Well if I'm able to destroy this unit here, the I mean the road here is practically open towards Groshny. Then I can cut the supply lines here. So I think we need to talk about supplies because this game also uh, requires that your unit are in supply in order to fight efficiently. In order to be in supply they need to get their supplies from their home base. But basically these railroad lines that exits the map here and here, they act as supply points for the Axis players and also down with the Romanians. Since when the units are finished acting they have to be within 
two hexes of a supply line. Uh, sorry, it has to be within two hexes of a supply uh, of a railroad line that exits one of these points here. If the Russians are able to encircle them and cut off the supplies, they will fight much much less effectively. For the Russian player, the Russian factories are and cities are supply points. So as long as they can trace it, trace their line into a Russian city or off the map here, they are good. So that was my idea down here. If I can push them away here, I can block the supply lines. We need to go back to the production chart and we will have to take the Romanian production point and move it down one because activating a leg unit cost one point. All right, so this guy is now activated. And the leg unit that activates get eight action points or movement points and he can start using them to move and fight all right so the romanians want to attack the soviets here in this hex and this hex is clear uh, i didn't print out the terrain chart so i have to borrow it from the main game um so we see that if there's nothing in it it's clear terrain the water and coastal hexes, um, there are the roughs, and there are woods and swamps. The really neat thing is that it costs one movement for a clear hex or if you move along a transport line. Else it's cost two basically, so it will cost two to enter a city or fort or any type of rough hex, desert hill, swamp, woods will cost two. So that's very easy to remember. Okay, looking back here, this is a clear hex, so it will cost this unit one to enter the clear hex. Ah, he will have to cross the straight, so that will cost him plus two movement, and he will attack a unit in fair weather, so that's plus one. All in all, it will cost the Romanian Romanians four points to attack here. There are two types of attack, assault and mobile attack. And I'm going to do a mobile attack, uh, because then I can attack multiple times. If I do an assault, other units can join in. That's the major advantage of an assault. Um, there's, there's no other units that can help me, other ground units that can help me. So I'm going to do a mobile attack. This is how I calculated. It says one cost for a clear hex. Then it's plus two for crossing a straight. That's three and plus one for attacking a unit in hex at affected by fair weather so that is four points and that's all all right one more thing i would like to say before we really get started and these hexes here are uh, you see they are kind of light in color and have a dot in them you can't enter these hexes it's forbidden and you can also see that there is uh, one of these forbidden hexes here so we can't enter this hex Presumably the infrastructure doesn't doesn't hold up, so we, we can't do it. So, okay, so I'm attacking now here, and I'm paying four points of uh, action or movement. Leaves me with four. I'm using a red die for the Soviets, and this black and silver die for the Axis faction. Right. So now uh, we determine if we want to add on some event markers. So we are using these markers here, if we were two players. And secretly choose will commit, will commit or will not commit. Of course, I'm just going to do this openly since I'm playing both sides. And I'm thinking that the Romanians will ask the favor of the Luftwaffe for ground support. It has to be within five hexes. One, two, three, four. So that's fine. They will ask for support. Oh, I didn't see that. I can actually... 2, 3, 4, 5... Yeah, also the Russians can do that. They can also... Or the Soviets can also ask for support. 4, 5... But they won't do that. I don't think they will do that. Rather, they are just going to fall back. The Axis player also has this ground support marker. You can play this marker if your, your entire army do not have tanks. And even the armies that are not on the board, you can't have tanks. So it means that the German player cannot use ground support, but the Romanian player can use ground support because they don't have tanks. 
the Soviets has this unit as well and um, both the ground support marker and this tanks marker uh, represent uh, they rep represent battalions or smaller army units that not constitute a whole division so they are temporarily gathering enough units to increase their battle strength so if they play these tanks um, then their unit will be considered tanks for the rest of this combat afterwards it goes away and it comes back next turn so every turn the Soviets or will want to play the tanks but I'm not sure this is the combat I don't think they can do much damage so I'm not going to do that I'm going to I'm not going to play the tanks either I'm saving it so then we roll the dice in my dice tower oh all right interesting this is what we got let's see how we resolve that all combats regardless of the units involved or the types are resolved in this table so that's very very simple so the attacker is the die roll of the attacker is in this column and the defender is in this column the Romanians did attack now which are the Axis factions and the defender was the Soviets but now we need to look at the modifier for instance, if there are Germans units involved, that's a plus two modifier straight up. So if if it wasn't Romanians but Germans, they would already now have a five. Okay, so there's a minus two modifier on the die roll if you attack across a straight. And the Romanians did attack across a straight, so they're down to one. But then they had air support, so that's plus two. Yeah, they also committed a ground support marker. So they will get 4. So now we cross-reference the end result, which is 4 and 6. And we get AS plus 2. Ignore the plus 2 because that's only valid in an air-to-air -air combat. In a ground combat, an AS means that the attacker is stopped. And the combat is over and the attacker attacker's activation ends. So they use their ground support. They have to end their activation so they can't use the remaining 4 points and I'm going to twist them like this so I remember that they have moved or done their activation. They used air support so the Luftwaffe unit up here does not longer have 2 sorties but they have flown another one so they have now, now have 3 sorties. If they ever get to 6 sorties they can't fly anymore. They sort of overstretch themselves. The ground support marker will come back, but we have to find out when. So we will roll a die. So it will be back in four turns. So that is one, two, three. So it come back in November 1942. I can forget about the southern parts of the map. Now then, that was a complete disaster actually. If I'm lucky, I can actually smash through here and reach this reduced tank unit and eliminate it before they are able to refit it. Okay, so then I'm going to activate this Panzer, that is going to cost me 2 production. The German has 8, so they're down to 6. So I said that the leg unit has 8 points of movement, a Panzer unit has 10. And they are just attacking in a clear. So let me, let me see if we're going to commit something. Um, I, the only marker or event marker I have available is the last ground support marker um, but a German player cannot use ground support because they have tanks or panzers in their army. Should I fly a sortie? Well I could fly for, from up down here. One, two, three, four. Hmm, this is a very important battle, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to commit a sortie. Now, ideally, this is secret, right? So the Soviet player doesn't know that I'm committing it. But, 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 he is too far away, I think. One, two, three, four, four. No, he's not too far away. So he's going to uh, also going to fly a sortie. Or, or uh, get, um, he's not flying a sortie. He's asking for ground support from his um, Air Force. This is a very important battle and the Soviet player recognizes that. So he is going to add this tank marker to the battle. Okay, so first off 
What happens now is kind of interesting because now we have an air combat. Both sides are flying ground support into here, so now we have to resolve air combat. So I just roll the two dice. <laughs> okay, I got a six and a two. Now we will look for modifiers, but we will, are looking at the air naval combat modifiers. So if a German air unit is involved, that's plus two. So the German player has a plus eight because it was a German air force, it was Luftwaffe. All right, then we have to subtract the number of sorties the unit already has flown. Okay, so you see there, now you see the point with having low sorties because the Soviet player has flown three sorties. He can't go lower than one, so he has the worst result that he can have. And the German player has to, has to subtract three as well. Puts him down to five. So if we cross reference, now we get DR plus two. Looking at the table for air naval combat, we see that DR means that the attacker adds one sortie, defender adds sorties equal to the number part of the combat result table result. <laughs> All right, so that's. Uh, a, a one sortie for the attacker and two sorties for the Soviet player. It was an air support, so we need to check here as well. We got on DR. It means that both the attacker and defender receives the air support ground combat modifier. So both units were able to stay in the area long enough so that su they supported their own troops. For the guys down here, it means that. And the Luftwaffe has four sorties, but the the third air unit, third air fleet from from uh, from the Soviet Union has to add two sorties, so they are down to five. Right, so the combat here continues now. We roll again this time for this time for the ground combat. Right, so they get plus two for being German. They get plus two because they are tank units and they are attacking in fair weather. And I think they will get plus two for air support. And the Russians also get plus two from their air support. And they get plus two for being tanks as well. Yeah, that's it. So where do we end up with 10, 8? We get a diamond. And that means that there is no effect. So they were unable to break through. Uh, I've completely forgot to pay any cost at all. So. Um, because this here is a clear hex, it costs only one to enter that hex and it costs one to attack a unit in a clear hex not affected by the weather so it means that these guys have eight left so you see they can attack quite a lot of times okay, so the Soviet are losing their tanks they are getting it back next turn um, the Germans can continue and then we are down to six two. the Russians are, are are going to commit air support to this battle I, I, I don't I don't I don't want to I can risk losing this battle uh, as the Germans and still do it the attack next round so I'm not committing right so the Germans get two for being German and they get two for being tanks Russians are adding two because they have air support in fair weather and again, if we cross-reference this, we get a dot. Nothing happens. A Russian air or the Russian air force has to add the sixth sortie, and they can not fly anymore. Well, we are going down to four, and we are attacking again. Um, this time, sneaky as I am, I am adding air support from Luftwaffe to help me break through. The Russians can't do anything, or the Soviets can't do anything. So I rolled a 6 and a 5, the Germans get 2 for being German, 2 for tanks, and 2 for air support. And the other guys don't have any air support, so they don't get any modifiers. Cross reference 6 and 11, DR means defender retreats. So that means that um, the 21st has to retreat, uh, I think. It will retreat here and now the attacker can choose if he wants to take ground 
and enter this area here um, and that doesn't cost anything I already paid when I initiated the attack and I'm going to attack for two points I'm going to attack the 21st no sorry the 44th almost forgot I need to add a sortie to Luftwaffe so I'm attacking again and I'm not committing Luftwaffe 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 I actually can but I'm not going to do it I'm going to use the power of my panzers to take them out by myself if I can ok so it seems to be a good rule for the Axis player now he gets plus 2 for being German and plus 2 for being tanks in fair weather and the other guys are not getting anything and that should be oh defender eliminated so when that happens um, I just take away the defender whether it's full strength or reduced then if it's a mobile attack and it is a mobile attack I can put on a no enemy zone or control marker in the defender's hex Let's just quickly show you what that means every unit exerts a zone of control one hex around them and when you enter an enemy zone of control one of two things happen either you have to stop your movement or you need to attack this unit so uh, in this example if this German unit is attacking this Soviet unit up here this Panzer unit and wins forcing this guy to retreat away then he can take ground but when he does that he will enter the enemy zone of control of both of these two units so now he has to stop again and he has to now either attack this unit again or the other Soviet unit in this position if on the other hand now we get a defender eliminated as we did now you this unit is of course eliminated and an enemy no enemy zone of control marker is added that means that when I enter this hex there is no enemy zone of control in here due to this marker and the confusion of the battle that just occurred so now I do not have to attack this unit I can actually continue to move off here just as if this unit wasn't present and exerted any zone of control so that's an advantage when you take out an enemy that you can actually use this base for movement now once the facing unit ends its activation this marker goes away so it's only valid for the current unit that has won the attack all right got it let's go back to the map and see how it plays out this activation now ends because I've spent all the points so this goes away again so the unit I killed needs to go into the eliminated box and it will go from the eliminated box into the mobilization box at the end of the turn so then it can be ready to be repurchased but that's of course is going to cost production